Now, the lesson that we are going to study at this time has a double subject, and I'm going to have you shout it back at me. Take it! Take it! It's yours! It's yours! Say that to the person on both sides of you. Take it, it's yours! Take it, it's yours! The other title that I gave this lesson is How to Possess Your Promised Land Now. Because you're going to find out here in the text that this was the consensus of faith. Let us go up immediately. Some of you wait until some sweet day to go up. But you'll find out that the mind of faith said, what, let us go up immediately. For we are well able to take it. It's not mess around here crawling and groveling in the dust. Now, I'm not going to read this whole text here, but I told you to turn to it in your Bibles and to keep your Bibles open there, and, and you can study the whole text. It's in the 13th chapter of the book of Numbers, the first through the 33rd verse. I think that's the entire chapter. And I'm going to read for you now the 27th through the 33rd verse, and we'll get the sense of it. Perhaps a little preface to the reading. Moses and the children of Israel were on the brink of the promised land. And Moses, the leader of God's people, sent a committee to spy out the land. You know, that's why I've never done too much with committees. I've tried it in this church. <laughs> now, all committees are not bad, but this one was a blip. <laughs> because you see, in a committee, you have sometimes people of different minds, and some have hidden agendas. <laughs> Someone has said, never underestimate the power of a committee to mess up a good idea. <laughs> so Moses sent a committee of the children up to spy out the land, said, go on up there and look at the land and find out what kind of people are there, See if they're bad motor scooters. <laughs> and find out if there's fruit in the land, if it's a rich land. What are the products, the produce thereof? Come back and give a report. And here, I'm going to start in the 26th verse, begins the report of the committee. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, is the but. <laughs> but the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. In other words, this, this land is just full of bad motor scooters. It flows with milk and honey, all right. It's good. It's got what we want. This is what God promised us but some bad folks are in our way. Uh-huh. Does that sound familiar? Beginning again at the 30th verse. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses, the bad news committee. Some of you can think now, you may have had some people in your life that were just bad news. That's why I have told you don't always tell people your vision. You've got to be careful who you tell your aspirations and your ambitions to because there are a lot of bad news bears out there. I like to tell folks what I'm gonna do after it's already done. Then I'll be like Gene Autry, I won't worry because it makes no difference now. So Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. In other words, he was saying to the bad news committee, shut up! 
Who are you listening to? <laughs> As I've said before, there are voices always talking to the mind. Listen, your mind is always being talked to. Consciously, unconsciously, and subconsciously. Day and night, voices talk to the mind. This is why you have to take over and use your power of divine self-mastery and tell your mind what to think and tell your feelings how to feel and tell your body how to react. Notice Caleb here. Right in the middle of all of that bad news, what did he say? He said, let us go up at once. But I like what is said before that. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses. Moses is the leader of God's people. Moses, the people had to be still. And in your mind, there are a lot of p different people's voices that you've got to still before you can possess your promised land. Who are you listening to? Be still and know that I am God. And he, Caleb cut right through all of that foolishness and said, let us go up at once don't waste any more time listening to bad news don't waste any more time listening to doubts and fears and worries because if you do continue to listen to negatives whatever the mind listens to over a prolonged period it will tend to believe you see the subconscious mind is a listener and a believer. What it hears constantly, it will believe and act in accordance therewith and bring it into manifestation. This is why you got to be careful who you're listening to and what you are listening to. And the mind must be commanded to listen only to the word of God, the word of good. Again, this is why Jesus, the master man, the mastermind, first disciplines the faculty of what? Hearing. You see how important that is? So if you are going to be a master in life so that you can possess the good that God has ordained for you, you are going to have to discipline your ear. Because as I say, and I say it again and again millions of times, Everybody's after your mind, and whoever gets the mind gets the behind. Everybody's talking at me. Everybody's after your mind. Tell you, no, you can't. Yes, you can. No, you can't. Yes, you can. No, you can't. You know you can't because you're too black. You're too white. You're too rich. You're too poor. You're too young. You're too old. You ought to get fundamentalists for a moment. Make up your mind, devil. Again, listen to the voice of Caleb. And he said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. We've got the power. I've got the power. Never mind the giants. Never mind the Amalekites and the Jebusites and the bad motor scooters. I've got the power. All power in heaven and in earth is given unto me. And I will not stand here shaking and trembling before the giants of fear and unbelief. Let me get going at once. This is a very good mind technique, and please catch this, catch this quickly. Get in the habit, if you find doubt, fear, and negatives talking to your mind, go up at once. Are you catching what I mean? Stop! the voices of negativity and doubt and worry and fear at once. Don't dilly-dally with the devil. See, that's how some people get caught, the dilly-dally. Kind of listed. Well, you know that is reasonable, you know. Well, you know that is so. They sure don't like me. I did say they act kind of funny. <laughs> say to all of the faculties of your mind, what? Let us go up. 
You see, because when you are there listening and having a conference with all of the voices of doubt, worry, and unbelief, in the first place you are down below the level of consciousness where you belong. Everything happens, operates on its correlative level of consciousness. But when you find yourself being barraged by all of the negative suggestions and messages, say again to the faculties of your mind, what? Let us go up at once. Flee as a bird to the mountain. We are well able to overcome it. Starting at the 31st verse. But the man that went up with him said, No! Mm -mm. Forget it! We be not able to go up against the people. For they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search, it is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. They're boogeymen that will get us. <laughs> By the way, I've told you this several times before, and I can't tell you too much. Don't ever tell your small children these boogeyman stories, because that's what's locked deep in the subconscious memory banks of some of you now. It's the same old boogeyman that Mama used to scare you with. And you see what they're saying here? All these boogeymen. Oh, we can't do that. There are boogeymen there. It will eat us up. <laughs> and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature, big motor scooters. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants? Listen to this. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So we were in their sight. Your boogeymen see you as you see yourself. Ooh you need to write that down, and I'm going to tell you what I mean if you don't know what I mean. Repeat it after me. Your boogeymen, Your boogeymen. see you Exactly as you see yourself. Your fears see you exactly as you see yourself. <laughs> Notice he said, we were in our own eyes as grasshoppers. <laughs> and they even got that into the religious hymn of the church, for such a worm as I. And because we saw ourselves as grasshoppers, they saw us as grasshoppers. Others see us objectively as we see ourselves subjectively. Isn't that interesting? That's the last verse, I believe, in that chapter. And really, this is like the bottom line. How do you see yourself? In your heart of hearts, how do you see yourself? How do you feel about yourself? Do you feel that you are a victim? Do you feel that you're just at the mercy of circumstances and conditions? Well, if you do, an old mangy dog that would run from somebody else would bite you. And you know, we're told never run from a bad dog. That, that's the first thing, that's the wrongest thing you can do unless you see you can get over the other side of the fence fast enough. <laughs> One of my neighborhoods, everybody, I guess, has, has dogs. When I, when I go, I carry my rod and my staff. <laughs> in case some of those bad ones don't want to recognize the presence of God in me. You'd say, the presence of God in me. <laughs> Blessings! <laughs> The presence of God in you, you motor scooter, you. <laughs> so how do I see myself? You see, again, this goes back to what Reverend Ike says, life meets me how? Just like a meat life. You go through life seeing yourself as a grasshopper. Everybody else will see you as a grasshopper. You go through life seeing yourself as a worm. 
Everybody else will see you as a worm. And what do people do with worms? They step on it. 